I have a fun little video here for you lot. I'm going to set myself a challenge and I'm going to see how many runs it takes to weld this. Don't ask me what schedule this pipe is. This is absolutely huge. My um, little brother gave me this. He's a pipe welder as well. And he sent me over this from the place he was working at. I've never welded anything this big before. So this size here. It's about two inches on the inside diameter. And on the outside is Oh, 115 mil, a 32 mil wall thickness. And I'm gonna see how many runs it takes to weld this. And the settings I'm gonna be using for the root is gonna be 130 amps. It's gonna be a synergic root setting so I control the amps and it changes the volts and wire speed automatically. So that's gonna be 17.2 volts and 4.8 meters a minute. And I'm gonna be capping it at probably 250 amps each run, maybe even lower to be honest. So anywhere from 200 to 250 amps. The gas I'm gonna be using, the flow rate will be pretty high, around 25 liters a minute. And the wire that I'm going to be using needs to be changed real soon. But it's a 1mm solid core copper free coating. This is the wire here. EcoSpark 420, 1mm copper free from these guys. So before you lot say anything i'm gonna beat you to it yes i know this is not the correct way to do this i know um i've heard from many people that you're meant to do tig root and like at least a flux core fill and cap and all that if not stick to fill it up but i don't have any of that stuff in my workshop i wanted to do this i wanted to weld multiple runs at my place the most we do is schedule 40 so it's a hot pass and a cap I get bored after a while so when I had no work I thought this is a perfect opportunity to just see how many runs this takes how many runs does this take I don't know how many people who do this in MIG so yeah right now just just think about it in your head how many runs do you reckon this would take and at the end I'll let you know so it starts off like any any pipe prepping both ends but something this thick took forever to prep I burnt it I, and I used a grinder it took long but was able to do it i was a little bit nervous because the prep wasn't good there was too much prep there's like too much of a a of of an angle that the shroud was getting kind of caught up at the at a high point on the pipe so the wire had to stick out a little bit further in order to get right down into the feathered edge to get the root in but so I surprised myself. I actually managed to um, to to salvage it, and it was it was a good route. So because I know you lot are watching, I know I have to do this at least properly. Even though this is an experiment and a little fun thing to weld, I know I have to do it good enough that it can be critiqued by you lot. So I do half and half, or instead of welding it in quarters, I, I do three tacks and I weld half, cut the tacks out, and then I weld the other half. Um, it came out nice what I was doing so at the start I was grinding the two corners of each one of my hot passes or fills whatever um, you, you want to call it I was grinding each two corners same with my root but after a certain point I thought I ain't got time I'm about to get work at any moment because this, this took me like two days spread across two days I started one day got work came back to it the next day so yeah so at a certain point I thought I'm going to take this gamble for having slag, um, slag inclusion or porosity or any old contaminants in the weld. And I stopped grinding about halfway through and I just used um, basically the, the beautiful Thronius MIG welder to, to, to be able to just do multiple runs without cleaning it. And hoping and praying. I was expecting there to be nastiness in the fill, but there was nothing. It... To me, it looks flawless, but there was 
you could see the V. You could see the, the, the V gap that I was welding and filling with material. I don't know if you can see the difference in the textures, whether that's an issue or not. Some people said there's an issue, other people said it's not an issue, but you'll see later on and um, let me know what you think. So at this point here, my good guy Janair, he came in wanting to inspect it. It's always fun to see what everyone else is doing, especially something this thick. Like I said, the most, the thickest pipe we do is about 10 mil. So to see like a 32 mil thick piece of pipe, that, you know, people are interested in stuff like that. We're up to eight runs already, and it is looking like this. <laughs> Nearly up at the top. So throughout making this, I was thinking to myself, what is the purpose of this? What am I going to use this for? I was half expecting to kind of throw it in the skip because, like I said before, I put almost no effort into anything with this really from prepping it from lining it up to welding it I, I, I really didn't put almost any effort into it so i was thinking am i gonna throw it in the skip and then a thought came to my head my bathroom door keeps on closing on its own and i'm using random pieces of items and stuff to hold it open so i thought this would be a nice little industrial looking doorstop and if you've ever go on, if you've ever been on the Etsy Etsy store, I think ETSY store, I, I can't pronounce it. Anytime you've been on that store, they sell the most random scrap for such a high markup price. Um, I give you an example: a piece of train train track with a block of wood underneath it, a hole drilled through the train track with a piece of rope wrapped around it like a handle, and they sell that for like 60, 70 pound as a doorstop. So I was thinking, okay, well, yeah, I can use this. I can make a doorstop out of this for my own house. I was going to do um, one half with all the start stops was going to go to my house and the other half with no start stops. I thought, I can try sell it. I did later on, though, put both of these in my house. But, um, yeah, that's, that's what kind of came to my head while making this. So it's done now. It took 25 runs to finish this. And if you lot guessed 25 runs... Give yourself a little round of applause. Good guess. No worries. <laughs> Let's acid test this then. So what's you this? You've charging roids for acid. Where's your PPE? Um, my hands are so fucked. Why are you swearing? You can't swear. Oh, Let's sorry. do this. You, you messed my video up already. <laughs> See people, this man is not for public consumption. I don't know how well this is going to work. I've never used it before. We shall see. We shall see. That worked a lot better than I expected it to. But oh, well, it's going to be on your hands though. Yeah, f that's what soaps are made for. Whoa! Wait, not, not that much. Let this be a perfect example of when I tell you a lot. We don't know what we're doing where we're at, or where I'm at at least, or at least me. I don't know what I'm doing. But what I do know is what I know how to do, if that makes sense. What I know how to do, I know how to do. Anything else, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't claim to be no expert at anything, nor... Uh, yeah, basically an expert, I should say. I don't, I don't claim to do any of that stuff. I just, I've just was taught a certain way, and I do things that I was taught. Anything outside that scope, I am a dummy. We are a dummy to this. We understand a little bit. Of course, you have to polish it up, but we don't have the means to polish. We, we, we don't have anything fine enough to polish this. So um, it's just getting acid etched straight away. The material that the the liquid that we're using, I don't know nothing about it. Everyone in this in, the, in my workplace has a small grasp of knowledge, and each person helps to teach the next people, if that makes sense. But overall, none of us have all the answers or all of the information. So every day is a basically a trial and error i just thought i'd put that out there let you not know that chris is very serious i scratched myself yesterday and he's like let me clean it let me clean it i'm like it's a scratch no he's you like, have to man but you're gonna get an infection don't forget to subscribe to this channel because my next video will be me making this spraying rotating weld positioner 
So for the sake of speed, the other one's outside drying. I've sprayed it with lacquer. Mm -hmm. This one here, I'm gonna eventually sell. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna put a bit more time and effort into cleaning this up. But this is basically the gist. It goes underneath the door so it doesn't tip over. So if you've been following me for any amount of time, you, you probably guessed I don't answer a like and a follow. But in this video, I will. I need the algorithm to push my videos forward so I can share more content. Please give a like, subscribe to my channel, and that will help me out immensely. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.